Uh, this week, Tate Britain in London has unveiled a complete rehang of its collection of British art for the first time in 10 years. Visitors can see more than 800 works by more than 350 artists across six centuries. Pieces by John Everett Millet, David Hockney and Barbara Hepworth are joined by new additions in a move said to reflect the diversity of the Tate's collection. Nevertheless, this new hang has opened the question of whether the choices are influenced by the politics, indeed the culture wars of today. Old art, previously overlooked, has been revisited with issues like colonialism, slavery and race on creators' minds. A new art by LGBTQ plus and female artists is incorporated in the display, reflecting a new urge to present diversity. I'm joined now by the art critic J.J. Charlesworth. Um, J.J., you, you wrote uh, a pretty fierce uh, article about this. Um, but interestingly, uh, very heavily criticised in The Spectator, heavily criticised in The Guardian as well. What is it that you're all saying? Are you all saying the same thing? I think the, the, what's very striking about this new rehang is the emphasis that it uh, puts on British social and political history, going back to 1550. Um, and at one level, from, I would say that it's good to have some context when you're looking at very old artworks, because, of course, it's very difficult to know how they were made, uh, what was going through in an artist's mind, how, what was going on in, in the artistic culture of the time. But what's really uh, striking, and I think a bit of a problem, is ha quite how emphatic... Uh, and uh, overbearing the idea of uh, uh, the various episodes in British history of the last uh, five, six hundred years uh, are in this hang. Uh, it goes from uh, looking at uh, the art of, uh, of Charles, the period of Charles I uh, and, and Henry VIII, very much from the perspective of uh, migration, because our artists were moving to and fro uh, Britain uh, from Europe. It goes on to be very, very focused on the period uh, between the late uh, 1700s and, and and definitely the, the period where colonialism and, and uh, slavery were a big issue uh, in, in British politics. Uh, and it's very concerned to uh, uh, tell us about uh, those uh, periods in British history which are very contentious now, looking back. Um, so, so issues of race, uh, of the representation of women, uh, of the uh, way in which artworks didn't or did reflect uh, periods in colonial and imperial history in Britain, they're all kind of written up and presented to you as if that's the main event. And there is a bit of a, a, an aspect to it which uh, seems to lead you not really to pay attention too much to whether the artworks are any good. <laughs> that's a real issue. Uh, because there are some, you know, some artworks are drawn out uh, in order to make the point, in order to kind of focus you on a, on a discussion about, say, uh, the suffragette movement or uh, the, the period after uh, uh, the abolition or leading up to the abolition of slavery. So you have paintings which are not necessarily that, that great, but because they, for example, uh, have a black subject for, uh, in one or, or, or present the art of a, of a suffragette campaigner, Annie Swinerton, for example, and they're presented uh, for their value as social documents. Uh, and I think that's a bit of a problem because in the end, uh, are we talking about artworks which are interesting and, and exciting and, and good to see? Or are we there to, to be given a, a talk about how we should think about uh, British history? Uh, so I think there's a bit of a tension there between what the art gallery is there for. Uh, and it seems to me that the Tate is, is opting more now to uh, t uh, teach us about history rather than teach us about artworks. I, I think you even ended up in what you wrote, saying that you thought the, um, the Tate Britain wasn't really keen on its own collection. That it felt very uncertain about its own collection. I think we are, we're living in a period where people are very uh, ambiguous uh, about what it is to be British, what Britain's history is, uh, uh, it, how it should be represented, how it should be understood, whether it should be valued, whether it should be criticised. So there is a, there is a very kind of uh, contemporary aspect to how Tate Britain, which is, of course, uh, has to look after... Uh, British art, right? It's not just a collection of historical works, it's a collection of historical British works uh, in large part. Uh, and Tate Britain is, 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 is trusted with that, with that collection. So there is a, a, a real uh, issue about whether uh, the curators are less interested in, in talking up the, the, the values and virtues of their collection than uh, using it to, to, to uh, score points in what is a very heated uh, and, as you say, culture wars style debate about, about how we should understand British history. I, I find a sort of generational arrogance in this, uh, the, the, the feeling that, um, you know, what we think today is self-evidently superior to what was thought by people in previous eras. 
uh, when I was reading history, I was taught about a thing called historicism, which is broadly the idea that, you know, all of history was about leading up to the present moment, mm -hmm. not understanding that the present moment is just a moment in history and will soon be, you know, scrutinised by historians of the future. Do, do, you, do you get that feeling that really it isn't suitable for an art collection covering centuries to be so governed by a concern which is of the moment? We don't know how long the moment is, but it is of the moment. I think that it's very clear that there are uh, biases and emphases in the way in which these uh, moments and periods are talked about. I think, for example, I mean, what's most, I think perhaps most sort of uh, frustrating is are the rooms which are dealing with the period between uh, the period in which uh, abolition was, uh, where slavery was was current and when it, and up until it, the period of European revolutions in the 18, uh, uh, 1830s and around then. Because what you notice is that the, the constant refrain in the way in which it's written up, because you're reading the wall labels for each paint, each, each painting, and they have uh, a lot to say about this. You notice that the, 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 the style and the tone of it is quite downbeat. It's always kind of re rehearsing the fact that people were enslaved, uh, that, that, that there was uh, colonial domination and so on. But at the same time, you're, you're dealing with an epoch in which the rights of man, uh, uh, you know, uh, liberty, uh, equality and fraternity, uh, uh, were major issues, which actually drove a lot of the, the way in which people thought about what the future could be and how society could progress. And I think what's really lacking in this, even though it's a progressive chronological ordering of British art, is a very uh, real sense that there's no real progress in uh, British society. And that's obviously re very reflective of some of the things that uh, we're, we're, we're pointing to in current uh, it, it, controversies. It, it is an extraordinary er um, era, uh, because as you say, this is the period in which uh, liber liberalism begins, but also, uh, also, of course, abolition. Abolition of the slave trade in 1807 abolition of slavery in the British Empire, uh, if I recall, in 1834. Um, anyway, uh, you and others have been pretty critical, but um, you might want to judge for yourself by going down to Tate Britain to see the, uh, the new hang. Uh, thanks to JJ Charlesworth.